Uh, welcome back from lunch, everyone. Um, I'm Mike Kelly, and uh, we're going to kick things off talking about managing open telemetry with OpAmp. Um, and that's a new open telemetry effort around uh, managing agents and defining the protocol for managing those agents. So first, a little bit about me. I'm Mike. As I mentioned, I'm the CEO of ObserveIQ. I've um, been working on observability for the past 10 years, primarily on the, the agents, the integrations, and the pipelines. Uh, so everything about telemetry and, and getting data in. Um, and at ObserveIQ, we've been entirely focused on open source telemetry for the past couple of years. Um, started with uh, developing an open source log agent uh, stanza that was uh, eventually contributed to uh, open telemetry. And then more recently released uh, BindPlane OP, I'll talk about it in a second, which is an open source observability pipeline and agent management system. Um, and it uses open telemetry at really at the core. But let me jump in and talk about OpAmp. And I'm going to apologize to all the electrical engineers in the room because OpAmp is an overloaded term. This is not operational amplifiers. This is open agent management protocol. And it is a network protocol for remote management of large fleets of data collection agents. And it's worth noting, I think, that it starts with large fleets. Like That was a key consideration of this from the very beginning. Um, it's a protocol definition. It's part of the open telemetry project. Uh, and currently consists of that protocol, uh, implementation in Go, and then applications that are utilizing this. And one thing I'll note here is, you know, just because it's part of open telemetry, this really isn't, and I'll show an example of it managing open telemetry collectors. It's intended as a, a general solution, a generic solution. Um, so the idea is that this should be used for any agent, proprietary, open source, um, the idea was to get folks that have done this before come together, um, like we do with a lot of things in open telemetry, and define how we want um, uh, how we want to manage agents and what that protocol should be. So, what does it include? the The short answer is everything that you need to um, manage the life cycle of agents. So that includes things like definitions for remote configuration of agents. Obviously, things like status reporting, agent's own telemetry, so what's going on in the internals of that agent. Um, agent upgrades, so allows for packages to be deployed. And then secure um, security considerations like connection credential management and secure auto-update capabilities. And again, that was part of the focus of you know, making sure that this is something that can be used by the, the largest organizations. Um, and I'm going to go through a little bit about the, the communication model and uh, a little bit more about the protocol. But, you know, a lot of the work, the hard work goes into defining the protocol, but it can be more interesting seeing it in an actual application demo. So I'll do a, a short uh, demo as well. So when it comes to the communication model, uh, there's a management layer, and this is where most of the definition comes in. There's an op-amp client. Um, this can be embedded in an agent. I'll talk about other ways that it can, um, can operate, and an op-amp server. Communication is um, typically via WebSocket, but also supports HTTP, and it's fully asynchronous if you're using WebSockets. Um, all, all the payloads are uh, binary serialized protobuf messages, and then the, as you might imagine, the op-amp protocol is well-defined for all the scenarios I just showed. But then it layers on an additional component, which is um, own telemetry for the agent. So um, as you might imagine, folks that are involved in open telemetry, resistant to uh, reinventing OTLP and definitions for uh, telemetry signals being sent to another service. So the way this operates is OpAmp will configure an OTLP exporter in the agent, and that will be sent then to the uh, OTLP, re re OTLP receiver in the agent management service. And the little box in the, the, the bottom that I neglected to mention the first time, other clients, that's really everywhere the agent would typically be sending data. So whatever your destination is, um, this is really just con concerned with the configuration and the management of that agent itself. This was one other model that um, you know, the specification uh, describes. It doesn't, doesn't uh, provide full, full specs for what this would be, but 
Um, a common scenario is we have an agent that's, and maybe it's proprietary, maybe it's something that you don't want to open up the internals and embed a new library in that. Um, and so in this case, we have separate supervisor process uh, that is intended to uh, be an op app client and also to manage agents, whether they're proprietary, um, you know, they could be open source, they could be agents that you just don't want to um, deal with changing the internals of that around. So it allows for some more flexibility, um, with, particularly with, with some proprietary agents, and just gives another model for this uh, uh, to operate. So that was a little bit about the protocol. I just have a couple minutes, so I wanted to jump into a demo and see this in practice. Um, and I'll walk through all the different scenarios we just talked about, but first, this is Bind Plane OP. Uh, it's an open source project, um, started fairly recently. It implements an op-amp server, right? And it also works with an open telemetry collector, um, specifically the Observe IQ distro for Rotel which includes an embedded op-amp client um, and some other functionality. So as we look at this, you'll see um, that, that there is already an embedded op-amp client in those collectors. But it takes advantage of the op-amp protocol to provide full lifecycle management and configuration of your observability pipelines. Okay, so this is Bind Plane OP, and what you're looking at here is um, several hundred agents that are under management. So this is a demo environment. It could very easily be uh, several thousand agents, um, but you can see all of these, some details about them, the status of those agents, the versions, the configuration, and even the amount of data flowing through them. And just a simple example of installing an agent. What this is going to do is it's going to um, deploy or download and deploy the Observe IQ distro for open telemetry. It'll give it an endpoint to connect to. And as soon as this comes up, it's connecting to that, that server and pulling down the latest configuration that's available for it uh, and is immediately under management. And so you can see that the, the demo system is now available. If we go in, we get more details about that. You can see the configuration details, but also other metadata about that uh, agent. And it's easy to change. So it had a predefined um, uh, configuration, but I also have a, a demo configuration that we can switch it to easily to show off some of the other capabilities. So error, you know, you know since you can report status, you can then get in-depth error messages. Um, so if I introduce a simple error to this file, right, something that happens very often when we're trying to configure complex agents like this, you know, it shows us exactly what's going on, tells us exactly how to resolve that. Um, that's all standard um, uh, in, or, or defined in the uh, op-amp protocol. So I'll go through and resolve this so we don't have any more red on the screen. Um, and then you can see it pushes that new configuration and we get the immediate status response. And part of that is, you know, with web sockets, it is very fast um, uh, immediate response communication. But a lot of this, we're talking about scale. so. We'll look at this, it's a configuration that was predefined, and we want to apply this to a large fleet of agents. So if I go and, and, and look at all my production instances, I'm going to select all of those again, it's 130, it could be 1,000 or 2,000. As soon as I select those, it's, it's, it already has connections and it can de deploy that at scale very quickly, but then they're also managed, so we know what's going on with those individual agents. Um, and one of the things, you know, I think you can pull it all together in a, in a second here when we talk about um, um, what you can do with this, right? So now we see that there's, you know, configuration that's been applied across a wide range of systems. Um, we know that now, since they're all managed, we can go in and upgrade those as well, can upgrade them individually, and this is using the protocol to, to push down packages, deploy them, and... Um, we get the status as that agent is being updated. And so we go through a cycle of disconnecting, reconnecting, and then validating the configuration is available. 
but one of the, the, the key pieces here, you know, um, and missed one spot. So, so agent update also supports, as you might imagine, doing this um, in mass, doing it across all of the agents, or also automatically updating agents. But then there's the own telemetry piece, which is, you know, we have visibility into the agents and what's happening um, at every stage along the pipeline. And so what you can do with that is, you know, we have sources here. This defines everything that's happening in the configuration file, all the data that's flowing from the source through the processors to the destination. Um, and so when you, when you have that level of detail, you can make changes in real time that are gonna impact the, the flow of data through your system and give you a lot of control over um, that data. So for example, here we saw there are a lot of logs coming through. We can add in a simple severity filter to filter out anything that's beneath the warning, apply that and get real-time feedback on the data reduction that we're seeing through the pipeline. And you can do that at every stage. You can do it on an individual basis. You can do it across hundreds or thousands of agents and um, see the changes in real time. So I think I'm at time. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of power in this. I um, wanted to share a couple of resources that are available here. It's in the slide deck uh, uh, online. But uh, any questions, love to chat with you about anything observability. And uh, thanks, and have a great afternoon. <laughs>